So this question says, what is the y-intercept of the graph of y equals a to the 17x? I'm going to try it down. y equals a of 17, or times 17 to the x power minus c in the xy plane where a and c are positive constants. Okay. So first of all, this is just you know, the generic equation y equals a b to the x, um, which is going to be an exponential equation because it's b to the x term here, right? Because as x gets larger, b gets much larger, and you'll have a curve that goes up like this. And the usual situation here is that your x or your your y-intercept, what are we looking for, the y? So our y-intercept is typically at 0, 1. I'll show you why, All right? So when x equals zero, what's going to happen? That means this is zero, which means b to the zero becomes just one. And then we'd have a here, right? So I could say the, you know, whatever a is will get multiplied by one. So I could say that y would equal a in this case. So if this is my typical y-intercept, so instead of calling it 1, I'll call it A for this example. Then what does this minus C do? All right, what does this minus C do? That minus C takes that y-intercept down C units, however many it is, right? It doesn't have to go to negative, but it's going to go down by C units. And that C units is going to be where, wherever, right, A minus C is, right? So if A were way up here at 10 and c were, let's say, a equal 10, but c equaled 5, then our y-intercept would end up being here at 5, right? Because when x is 0, from here at least, when x is 0, that makes this whole thing become 1. 1 time a is just a, and then we'd have a minus c, right? So 10 minus 5, so we'd end up there. So we know that our, we know that our, um, point on the y-axis is a minus c, so that means that our answer choice must be choice d here. Another way to think about this, and I'm kind of doing it already, and I should have mentioned this in the beginning, we could definitely use a strategy called plug in your own number, right? So using that strategy is very useful, especially for a question like this, and the reason why I know that I can use that strategy is because of having the variables and the answer choices. I can say, well, I'm going to say a is equal to 2, and let's see, and I'm going to say C is, C is equal to 3, right? So that means Y equals 2, parentheses 17 to the X minus 3 is my new equation. If I'm looking for the Y intercept, that always means that X equals 0. So I can say, okay, well, when X equals 0, right, I end up with that becomes 1 because 17 to 0 is 1. Is one. Well, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1, so I get Y equals negative 1. Right, So I'd have 0, comma, negative 1 as my y-intercept. What I then do is go over to the answer choices and plug these values in to see which one matches this 0, negative 1. So here, since a is 2, this would be 0, comma, 2. Well, that's not 0, negative 1, so that's gone. Choice b, this would be 0, comma, negative 3, because c is 3. But that's not what I want, so that's gone. Choice c would be 0, comma, negative a times c, so negative 6. Right? Like that's not negative 1, so that's also gone. And then D would be 0, comma, A minus C, which is negative 1, which is exactly what I want. And again, that's the reason why choice D is the best answer. So I should have probably started off with that strategy because we would have got there a lot faster. So keep that in mind. Whenever you see variables in the question as well as in the answer choices, this is a good strategy to use.